Well, hi everyone. Now today I want to talk to you guys about fiber optics. Not these kind of fiber optics. I'm talking about the fiber optics that are used in place of electrical cables to send signals out to electronics. Now most modern electronic devices in one way or another use an electrical signal, be it a pulse, a voltage, or a current, to control their operation. Usually this isn't much of an issue. However, in some special cases, noise, interference, inductance, or capacitance can interfere with the control signal so much that it causes undesired operation. Let me show you what I mean. Alright, so just for my demonstration, what I want to show you, we have an Arduino board sending a pulse width modulation signal to an LED. Now I want to make note, this is not a high-powered LED, this is not multiple LEDs, this is one LED only. So, nothing too spectacular to see. Okay, so this is the oscilloscope trace, that's the output of the Arduino board, that's the pulse width modulation signal, nothing special about that, not really even worth mentioning. So far, nothing too out of the ordinary really, just a plain old LED. However, as I said, if we use a longer signal cable, the effects of inductance and capacitance become even more pronounced. Also, impedance mismatch is going to cause something called a reflection. And this is all because we're going to send the signal using electricity. So what I have with me right here, let me show you. That is category 5, this is Ethernet cable. You'll notice these are twisted pairs, so they're supposed to cancel out any kind of inductance, noise, reflection, stuff like that. It's not supposed to happen. But I'm going to show you what happens when you try to run one LED through this cable. Now, just for note, this is about 6 meters, maybe more, could be 20 feet, but let me show you. Alright, so here we go again. We got the LED and the Arduino board, except this time we have this cable now. And LED's there. So you're probably thinking, come on, really? Inductance? What, you couldn't even measure that current unless you had a microamp meter? Come on. But check this out. That nice clean square wave that we had is gone. Now check that spike out. Now this is supposed to be 5 volts here, and look at that. It's gone up to almost 10 volts there. Holy smokes. But it gets worse. Now we've triggered out the scope, and as you can see, now it's going below the zero voltage line. So to me, that looks like a reflection. Right here, now this is zero volts, down here, it's gone below zero. It went 10 volts under. That is quite nasty. Again, as I said, this is because we're sending the signal out electrically. So there's that one there, and there's that one there. And that's because we're sending the signal out electrically over an electrical cable. Keep in mind, this is twisted pair cable running one LED. It could be because of an impedance mismatch, inductance, capacitance, things like that. But wait, there's more. All right, if you've watched any of my videos before, chances are you've probably seen this. Uh, three-phase blower here. Yeah, I use this from time to time, usually just to make noise. But you'll note, sitting on top of it, there's a little variable frequency drive. But that usually plays havoc with my computer. Now let me show you why. Alright, so we're still looking at the trace of the LED through the cable. Now keep in mind, this cable is still coiled up. Right on the floor where we left it. I didn't stretch it out. It's still being powered from that Arduino board which has its own separate battery. This is not grid power. This is not coming from the grid. Now watch this. I'm going to start this blower on this motor controller. Now you, you just watch this. See that? That's just radiated noise that's being picked up. Just from that cable that's coiled up on the floor. There's it off again. There's it back on again. It's even worse when something's actually plugged in and connected to the grid, because then it feeds back through the power system. Okay, now in most cases, this noise and interference is not a problem. But when you start getting into higher power devices, like think about motor controllers for electric cars, or for trains or things like that, this noise can become a serious problem. Today I want to show you guys a way to use fiber optics in a simple way to fix this problem. This is going to be simple, don't worry. If you're thinking fiber optics sounds complicated, it's really not. Today I'm going to show you just a few basic things that you can do with fiber optics. 
Now this might be one in several videos depending on how this goes. I just want to show you guys just a few things that you can do but it's not all going to fit into one video so we'll start with the basics. So today I want to show you how to make fiber optics work, how to get it from electricity to light and then from light back to electricity. I want to show you the very basics today. Alright guys, before I get started showing you how to use them, first I want to introduce you to a few parts that you're going to need. You'll need a transmitter and a receiver. Now I am using some of these parts mentioned in this data sheet. It's the Avago Technologies HFBR 0500Z series. Now this is the link here. I've got it highlighted to the website that you'll need to go to if you want to get this PDF. But really, if you search in Google for this text here, you'll, you'll find it there. Right, now this is the wiring diagram for these two parts. So this is the transmitter on the left here, and really all this is is an LED. Now they show an active low circuit that will help you suppress noise and false turn-ons, but if you want to do it in the very simplest way possible, the one is the anode and two is the cathode, you can just supply five volts positive to the one, negative zero volts or ground, whatever, to the two, and that'll turn the LED on. The light travels down the cable, goes to the receiver. Now the receiver is a phototransistor, so whenever light passes through the window that's in the transistor, the transistor switches on, so light does just as well as electricity in turning the transistor on. But this one I recommend following this wiring diagram uh, pretty much all the way out. Now the capacitor, you could probably make that a little bit bigger if your 5 volt supply is not stable you may want to add a smooth, smoothing capacitor there. But otherwise, this is the diagram. The data output is actually negative here, so you want to go your ground right here, and the common is actually the positive in this. Now one last thing before I show you anything else. Keep in mind these are plastic optical fiber using the versatile link connectors. So you'll need to keep that in mind when you're searching for your connectors and your cable, t cable types. Alright, so we're going to do the same demonstration again, except now we're going to use fiber optics to transmit the signal over distance. So this is the fiber optic transmitter board that I prepared here. Again, this is just an LED inside here, nothing special. Two 500 ohm resistors, and we're hooked to the Arduino board where the LED would be. Now this is the part number. I'll read it for you. This is T-1522Z, fiber optic transmitter. Now anytime you're not using these, anytime there's no cable in these, you really should put these plugs in. So take it out. When you're going to use it, it just keeps dust out of it. The transmitters are gray, and here's the plastic optical fiber with the versatile link connectors. Transmit is gray, and receive is blue. So you just connect it just like that. Right, it's largely the same on the other end. This is the receiver, and this is really a phototransistor. Like I said, it's a transistor with a window in it instead of a solid black plastic casing. So that allows light to get in. And the light actually activates the transistor. So that's pretty cool. Same thing. Take the plug out, and you'll plug the blue end in. Blue is the receive. A little bit twisted up. All right. Now this... There's a power supply here I'm using. It's a cell phone charger power supply. It's 5 volts, so you want 5 volts. Now this is a 6.3 volt. Uh, I think it's 3300 microfarads, but you don't need anything too large. And the output will be connected to LED. Green this time. So let's give it a try. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn this on and see if you can see this. And there it is. So the pulse width modulation signal comes from here, goes to the transmitter, it goes through all this length of cable, comes out on this board. I know it's not going to be in focus, but check it out. There's a light coming from that fiber optic transmitter coming down this cable. Right, now this is what it looks like coming out of the fiber optic receiver. So as you can see, even going through all this fiber optic cable, no noise or any problems like that. Let's take a closer look. And I'm sure you remember that huge turn-off spike we were getting. Actually, it's not a turn-off spike. Just used to saying it. 
there is a little jitter, but much, much improved. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this one. So I hope you join me next video. We're going to take a look at using fiber optics and IGBT gate drivers, see how they work together and what the benefits are of using fiber optics for IGBT gate drive. And I'm going to try to do a few more videos about fiber optics after that, just to show you some other cool stuff that you can do. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and message. I'll put it up here. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next one.